I get really inspired by stories. Um, cultural stories or um, sports stories, these kind of things. And I love telling those kind of stories with photography. It's a lot of fun. And so how I specifically got into it was um, I was really into surfing and skateboarding as a kid. And after uh, moving to, uh, you know, I had moved to Santa Cruz after high school and I got really, really into, I was really into surfing and skateboarding before, but I got really into it then. It was like kind of my college times. And then um, I started taking pictures of surfing and skateboarding. And from there, I, um, I decided to make it my career. So then I went to school for photography. Well, sometimes it's more um, created, so I'll try to meet with, I'll try to um, connect with people from the community, whatever that community happens to be, get to know them a little bit, get to know somebody who is, um, you know, has some influence in that, in that area, and then um, usually work with them, because then they can kind of allow me to, to get into certain places, and, ha and people tend to trust me much quicker. Um, so this is just for my own personal work. That's, that's how I do it. Um, but my advertising work is how I actually pay the bills. So that's, that's a whole different story of how I get influenced by that. You know, I'm always, it's always new for me. Um, my latest story. Some of my favorite ones were, uh, you know, doing six months, doing a reggae story in Kingston, in Jamaica. That was phenomenal. Um, two months in Rio just uh, right before the World Cup, the year before the World Cup, trying to, you know, photographing the, all different sides of Rio, which is a, is a really great culture. Um, Burma is a really great place. Um, you know, even in Los Angeles, I, I find there's some, some really, there's great stories everywhere, you know, so, um, specifically my latest one, I can't remember, but those are some of the ones, my highlights, I would say. You know, like, I think one of the biggest dangers, and this is the truth, is, um, is like doing something stupid like going for three weeks on a trip somewhere. For example, um, last summer, my, uh, my girlfriend and I, we rode our bicycles for 3,000 miles from Estonia to Greece through Eastern Europe. And it took about four months. And my biggest fear was that I would like, you know, forget the hard drive somewhere or you know with all the pictures on it or um crash on the bike and it would fly you know what i mean that or forget it just forget it on the ground or lose it or something like that fall in the water that's always like my biggest fear more than people you know people i've been pretty lucky so far you know i put myself in a position where when i'm in a when i'm in a um a rougher part of town or something like that. I make sure I know people that are from that part of town. And once you know people there, it's as safe as anywhere. They're just like, oh, cool, you want to take pictures? Great. You know, and I usually, when I take the pictures, I, I bring them back the next day or within the week, give them back to people there, and people realize that I'm not just here for the day and leave and never see me again. Mm -hmm. So I try to, try to um, submerge so, a lot into the culture as much as I can. So you about connecting with the people, not just getting there, snapping some shots and leaving. Yeah, absolutely. You can just get such better pictures. The more you can communicate with someone, and the more the, the more um, relaxed they feel, the better you can do. And oftentimes, you know, I, I would talk to somebody, and then you say to somebody like, "Hey, um, let's move." Like after you talk to them for a little while, then it's like, "Hey, let's move over to this door where there's light might be coming through a window or." You know what I mean? Or you want to line up a shot that has something that adds more depth to it, or you want to take a picture of them in a, in a church or whatever, and they live across the street. Hey, let's go to the church. So you can really design photography a lot easier the better you know everybody. It allows me to, um, to meet some amazing people, very similar to this. Like this kind of scenario right here happens to me um, a fair amount, you know, you, you, you just don't think about it until someone calls you up and says, hey, can you take pictures of this hotel down in, you know, uh, San Clemente tomorrow, and you just would never have gone there, and then you meet somebody or uh, some type of um, person that's not even famous, but maybe they're famous in their own world, they're a famous writer or a famous um, public speaker or even a musician, 
Those are people you'd never have access to, and sometimes you wouldn't even know you wanted to photograph them until you get the phone call that says, hey, you're going to photograph so-and-so tomorrow, and then you do a Wikipedia, and all of a sudden you're like, wow, this guy's pretty cool. You know, like, this is, this is interesting, you know? You know, I would have to say the most challenging thing in photography is, is, is when times aren't going so well financially. I would have to say, um, you know, weathering the low points or just going through the, the low times is hard, you know, and the phone's not ringing or um, for various financial reasons. You know, things are a little bit slow or whatever. It can be a little bit scary because working for yourself is, is um, you know, there's a lot, of, a lot on your back sometimes. And when it's going great, it's just smooth sailing. And as soon as things are going bad, you're, you have to be your, your biggest fan, and, and, and that can be really hard sometimes. Sometimes you got to be patient. You know, with my work, is, I do a little bit more. I don't do work that's as detailed as other photographers, but there's some people that will spend, you know, days. You know, they'll, they'll spend days. And it's kind of hard to really say. Like, to get one picture, some photographers have to spend a long time waiting for the light to hit the perfect time, and it's usually a landscape if they're waiting on it. But then there's another way to look at it, and it's like, how much time do I spend creating, you know, a portfolio around this um, theme or subject matter or something like that? And like, that can take years. You know, I have a really close friend, and he's working on a, a project he's been working on, I think, three to five years. And um, it takes a long time to build this stuff up, you know, to meet the right people. You know, his specific book is about... Um, called the Black Hollywood Project. And he is um, taking African American um, actors in this day and age and replicating older um, you know, movie posters and movie, you know, iconic movie imagery that we all know. And replicating them again with different, you know, with, with African American actors in it and stuff. And um, like duplicating identically. And this takes a long time. I mean, the shoots take a long time. Finding new people takes a long time. You know, that kind of thing is, is really, really time consuming. Thank you for watching A Wise Way. Subscribe to stay updated, share to pass the knowledge, or view our other videos on the left.